Are you trying to tell me that lions aren't dangerous? Oh, not if you know how to handle them. I've had one sleeping in the same tent as me before now. You're kidding. Honey, he had a lion sleeping in the same tent with him. In the same bed? Oh, no, not in the same bed, in the same tent. Oh. Wait just a moment, please, sir. Would you come this way, sir? Oh, thank you. Yes. Thanks. Boy, it sure was a privilege traveling with that English guy. Big game hunter, member of parliament, deep sea diver, you know? Yeah. Very kind. Fine. Hey, why should he get away first like that? I told you, honey, he's a VIP. We are all passengers on MA724 flight to Manila. Please proceed immediately to passport control. Thank you. It's very, isn't it? How old, eh? That's me. That's my uncle, General Bradbury. Uh -huh. I bet he's been through customs a few hundred times in his life. You know, he's the son of a Viscount. You don't say. You mean he's a real live lord? Oh, sure. Only he doesn't use his title because he's a member of the Labour Party. That's socialist in England. You mean he's a pinko? A commie? Hurt your leg in Kenya? No, motor racing. 24 hour race at Le Mans. Terrible prank. Got six. Oh, oh, What's the hold up? Big conference in the city. Foreign ministers. Police say maybe 10 minutes. Siamo qui a prima classe, no? I'm not suggesting anything. We've run into a minefield. I know about mines. The PRP, the Revolutionary Party. Must have been another demonstration. Hey. You don't think that he had anything? It could be. Funny he should zoom off like that. Delighted to meet you, Your Excellency. Charmed to meet you, Mr. Ambassador. Delighted is better than charmed. Coming, please, Major Bradbury. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Major Bradbury. I hope you had a pleasant flight. Oh, lucky to be here at all, sir. 
got involved in a bomb outrage. Bit of a lucky squeak, actually. I am sorry. Please sit down, Major. If it's all right with you, Your Excellency, the uh, Major was only a wartime rank. I mentioned it in my letter because I thought you would like to know that I did uh, reach field rank during the war. Fortunately, I was only called upon to fight against the Germans, never against the Ge That is, um... I quite understand. I'm most grateful to you, sir, for offering me this most responsible position. Your references were the best. Very impressive. Oh, uh, I only tutored the sons of the Duke of Burford and Sir Francis Mannering during the holidays, you understand, sir. Your headmaster also said some very nice things about you. I see you observed your country in Germany with honor during World War II. Two military crosses and a croix de guerre. Excellent. You have never visited Japan. Practically everywhere else in the world, sir, but uh, never Japan. So it is unlikely that you know how we educate our children. I know they're very strictly disciplined and presumably taught to live up to your samurai customs and traditions. As many as fit in with the modern world. You will find Koichi obedient, eager to learn, and respectful. That's how I like all my boys to be, sir. In three months, I am to be posted to London. I wish my son to enter an English school and learn a little of the British way of life. He knows nothing of your culture or your customs. Can you teach him these things in the time? Yes, sir, I would think I could. That is the answer I hoped for. Let us now meet Koichi. Mr. Bradbury. I am much honored, Mr. Bradbury, sir. With your permission, I will leave you with Koichi. I am sure you will wish to know him as he is to know you. is because I have a bad leg. It's not to, uh, to beat you with. Thank you, sir. I'm very pleased. I would not like to be beaten by such a thick stick. Well, Koichi, what do you know about England? London, very big city, sir. Full of pop stars and dolly birds. Very fine queen, and all was seven. Plenty of birds, plenty of policemen, plenty of double deck buses. I know this from television. Ooh, what a description of the land of Shakespeare, Nelson, and Churchill. You've heard of them, I hope. No, sir. But haven't you been taught any history? Yes, sir. Japanese history. I know all about Minamoto no Yoritomo Tokugawa Ieyasu. Yes. Well, uh, my subject is um, English history. Really? I'm very sorry, sir. I work very hard to learn all about English history. Good. Well, let's start our first lesson. Uh, is this uh, important? It says, Welcome to my classroom, Mr. Blackberry, sir. I will do my best to be a good pupil and comrade. That's very nice of you, Koichi. Thank you very much. It's a shame to rub it out, but, uh, well... Ten sixty six. That's when English history very started. When William the Conqueror invaded from Norman. Mother, then I know. Here is no expenditure. No, you can't. Now, you can't even party with me. Yeah,
party. Mr. Bradbury, I believe. I'm Günther Müller of ZTF, the German equivalent of your BBC television. I didn't think you handled the World Cup too well. Mm, at least we played in it. How did you know my name? Mr. King, the American chap who was on the flight with you. Oh, him, yes. I'm afraid I pulled his leg a bit, but uh, you shouldn't believe anything he uh, told you about mm. me. I didn't. Anyway, he described you quite accurately, even down to the limp. You received that in the motor racing accident, I understand. No, I got that in the war, as a matter of fact. Your lot did it. Really? You were a flyer. that about? The guest of honor, foreign secretary. As the second most unpopular man in the country, he rates a bulletproof car and a police escort. You were saying you were in the Royal Air Force? No, a uh, brigade of guards and then the parachute regiment. I was one of, <laughs> one of Monty's chaps. Ah, you were wounded in the desert? No, just um, outside Hamburg. Hamburg? I know that region quite well. Can you recall the name of the village? Look, you'll be asking official secrets next. <laughs> oh, there he is. Come up in the world. Good evening. It's a pleasure. Good evening, Mr. Minister. Mr. Ambassador, Madame Kagoyama. You honor us with your presence. The President asked me to convey his personal greetings to His Imperial Majesty on the occasion of his honored birthday. Splendid looking fellow, don't you think so? I don't like politicians or the press. May I offer you a little refreshment? Perhaps some champagne? You are very kind, but please continue to greet your guests. I, I see a good friend of mine oh, over there. I see. I 
Jacob. Show you all right. Give me some air. Oh, let me see. Let me see. Oh, it, it's nothing, Bradbury. Just a slight abrasion. Here, have this. Come on, drink it. Break your rules. Pull you together. And then, when you feel better, perhaps an interview for television. You know, hero of the day. I can't stand that sort of cheap publicity. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Bradbury, sir. Now then, many Asian people, when they're speaking English, transpose the letter L and the letter R. You, for example, you call me Mr. Bradbury instead of Mr. Bradbury. Please excuse very, very much. Nothing to be ashamed about at all. As a matter of fact, we've been trying to teach the rest of the world to speak English for 200 years. Round the rugged rock, the ragged rascal ran. Now, you repeat that after me. Round the rugged rock, the ragged rascal ran. Round the rugged rock, the No, no, not l, 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 it's r, r, r. Round the rugged rock. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's right, now. Round the rugged. A moment, please. Round the rugged. It's not as though you can't pronounce the R. You can. Lovely ladies love lamplight. Now, that's what I want you to say. Lovely ladies love lamplight. Now, you repeat this after me. Lovely ladies love lamplight. Lovely ladies love Round right. Exactly, so you can pronounce the letter R. The only trouble is that you pronounce it when you're reading the letter L. I promise to do better, sir. Now don't worry about it. I've got a plan. Give me the pencil. I'm going to write my name in such a way that you can pronounce it properly. There, read that. Mr. Mr. Brad the Way. That's right. Now we're getting somewhere, aren't we? Here, sir. Playtime's over. Get off of the next terminal. Okay, dog, Mr. Blabbery, sir. Thank you, Marco. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I'd say about uh, one hour. Uh, the ambassador likes me to stay nearby, sir. Oh, I don't think we have anything to worry about. <laughs> There you are. And you drink it slowly. I don't want you burping all over the place. Carlyle wrote, Under the sky, there is no uglier spectacle than two men with clenched teeth and hellfire eyes hacking one another's flesh, converting living bodies and priceless souls into nameless masses of putrescence useful only for turnip manure. Do you understand that? Some of it, sir. The wars have a present sound. War is evil and unnecessary. But nations still fight each other, even today. Did you kill many people in the war, Mr. Bradbury, sir? Well, one either killed or one was killed. Were you ever frightened? No, not really. You see, when you go into action, the chemicals start to work. 
the adrenaline pumps. You do all sorts of things you never dreamed you were capable of doing. I remember once in France, October 44, actually, I was holed up in a foxhole with four of my men. Hell of a battle was going on. Shells, mortars, nebelworthers, flamethrowers, bullets by the million. Ooh, they were throwing the lot at us. here, sir. Well, the Bosch still holds a strong point on top of the hill. We control the whole valley from there, sir. Yes, sir. Bit tricky, sir. We'll go. The CO wants us to storm the hill. It's impossible, sir. It's an order. As Longfellow says, I've got to reason why. Well, he didn't have to run into or die. Get me the bazooka. You tell the company. Tell the company to keep me coming. You're not going out there alone. You stay here, and that's an order. If I don't make it, Act on your own initiative. Good luck, sir. enough to do such brave deeds. I hope you never have the opportunity to do so, either of you. Ah, Mr. Bradbury. It is good of you to join me here. The garden is looking very beautiful, is it not? Certainly is, Your Excellency. I have been glancing through Koichi's books, Mr. Bradbury. Well, there's nothing wrong, I hope, Your Excellency. On the contrary, he seems to be doing very well. Oh, he's a good worker. He's quick, attentive. He has a lively imagination. Ah, sometimes a little too lively. You will forgive me asking you, Mr. Bradbury, but did you also tell Koichi you were, um, friendly with the Queen of England? Well, not friendly, sir, no. I, but I certainly told him I'd met her. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, at a, at, a, at a charity garden party, actually, in one of the big marquees, as a matter of fact. I was exhibiting some roses that uh, some of my boys had grown, and Her Majesty stopped to admire them, and she said... Uh, and I can remember exact words she used, sir. She said to me, has it stopped raining outside yet? And I said... I, I think so, ma'am. That's how we address the Queen, so we call her ma'am. I think so, ma'am. I said, shall I send one of my boys to find out? And she said, no, thank you, Mr. Bradbury. That will not be necessary. How did she know your name? Oh, we all had our names printed on those little things you pin on your lapel. She's very quick at that sort of thing. Hmm, oh, I see. Koichi also said something about taking off your coat and laying it in the water, 
so that Her Majesty would not get her feet wet. Oh, who could gracious. He's getting me mixed up with the great Sir Walter Raleigh. <laughs> That's a choice one. We must both take great care that Koichi does not get his thoughts mixed up. Must we not? Oh, absolutely, Your Excellency, absolutely. Is there anything else, sir? I think not. Oh, yes. There is one other thing. Sir? Forgive me, but I know Koichi is always pestering you to tell him about your war experiences. Oh, I don't mind that, sir. I am sure you do not. But these days, Japanese people do not wish even to speak about war. So I ask you not to encourage Koichi in such inquiries. Your Excellency, I quite understand. And as I quoted Koichi just the other day from Carlisle, under the sky, there is no uglier spectacle than two men hacking one another's flesh, converting living...見つめることが必要なんだ。恥ずかしくて自分の心を見つめられないようでは駄目なんだ。自分の心に人を蔑んだり恐れたり嘘をついたり恨んだり欲を変えたりする心があれば人の目をじっと見ることができないだろう。その
Well, what we learned in the commanders was very different from that sort of thing. Commanders? I thought you were in the parachute regiment. Both, old man, both. Parachute commandos, remember? Arnhem, or were you out of it by then? I hope it won't disappoint you, Major, but I was never in. Let's get back. We have to change plans. It is Wednesday, is it not? Yes, Miss Bradbury, sir. Yeah? Sir! Oh, sorry, the museum not closed, is it? Yes, sir. Been closed for a month. Surely the fun, sir. Come on. Oh, I am sorry. Can't be helped, sir. Military matters do not interest the younger generation, sir. They've been more interested in playing their transistors than not getting their air cut. Come inside, sir. Great performance. Thank you very, very much, boys. Wrap it up. Thank you. Now that we're in, Sergeant, could we uh, take a last look around? According to higher authority, no, sir. But seeing as how you was in the brigade, just, um... Carry on regardless, sir. Thank you. Careful with that, now. Uh, excuse me, sir. I think I remember you, sir. Wasn't you in the Scots Guards, 1st Battalion under Colonel uh, Redverse McKenzie, sir? Yes, that's, uh, that's right, sir. I thought so. I never forget a face, sir. Oh, uh, uniforms and so forth that way, sir. Thanks. Oh, uh... Have a drink with me for old time's sake. Oh, most civil of you, sir. Dad. Grabs up, Dad. How much she give you? The equivalent of 10p, the stingy bastard. He's no more a guards officer than I'm a bleeding ballet dancer. Well, never mind, Dad. He's taking Kinley Pub for lunch. Yeah. That ought to make up for it. <laughs> Was the sergeant a good sergeant, Mr. Bradley, sir? Oh, I expect so. It's difficult to remember after all these years. I can't remember everyone. I just remember specific incidents, like uh, when I got this, for example. You never told me about that, sir. I'm afraid I can't. I promised your father I wouldn't talk to you any more about fighting. Oh, please. Just this once. Did it hurt when they got your leg off? I didn't cut it off. It happened in Germany, as a matter of fact, when I was escaping from Cronenberg. I suppose I could tell you about that. That's not really fighting. We were locked up in a castle, surrounded by water. No one had ever escaped from it before. But after months of preparation, we set in motion an ingenious plan. Hold it. Can't let you risk it. 
Bradbury. And that's an order. Sorry, sir. Not wearing the old hearing aid. <laughs> There comes a time, Kuichi, when it is necessary to disobey an order. Remember what I told you about Admiral Nelson putting his telescope to his blind eye? Yes, sir. This was one of those occasions. We made it, but I still got slivers in the old leg. Ah, here comes Marco. Come on. Samurai sword thing sticking out in front. Most people caught them with a the halibut, but we were clever. We caught them with a the sardine. Now, uh, I know what we can do. Should we go fishing one day, you and I? Just you and I together. Hmm? <laughs> there is some more, sir. So we'll choose a nice day, and we'll go to the fish market and get some bait. Come on, sir, coach. Hear me. And, What's uh, happening? Then we go out in the boat, and as soon as we get there, we'll. Um... <laughs> Didn't anyone shoot? The driver started it. We did not need him. He saw my face. He won't give us any trouble. Keep still. Hold him down. Keep still, we'll kill him. Okay, I keep still. Are you right, Mr. Bradbury? Yeah, He's fine. fine. You won't understand this, boy, but we've got to do it. You make a big mistake. You don't know what to have in Mr. Bradbury. Get down! <laughs> Nordzucht. We were bloody well filming here only 20 minutes ago. It is a PRP job, without a doubt. I think you'll need faces, huh? Oh, I have them on film. 
I must have at least some of them. Müller, German television. May I offer my, my sympathy? And if we can assist you in any possible way, just let me know. Thank you. He was a good man. A good man. Get his body back to the embassy and inform his wife. I... This looks like Bradbury's. Permission to speak, sir! Is Bradbury dead, too? He was dragged off with your son, sir. The gentleman concerned took on all comers with that walking six sir. He went down time and time again. Very gallant action, sir. It just shows how one can misjudge a man. I made no misjudgment, Herr Müller. <laughs> There, 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 there. They don't have a chance. Good. There they are. Trucks coming. Look, it's here. Had a rough ride. Okay, get rid of it. Use this. Right. Give the boy to me. Put him in the truck. Shouldn't we blindfold them? They can't have any idea where we are. seem to differ. What do you know of the teacher? Mr. Bradbury. Mm -hmm. I can't... I can't say I know him. I've met him. He puzzles me. Mr. Bradbury is a man who seems to attract trouble. Really? I would like to know more about him. Perhaps you can help me. Perhaps I could. May I use your phone? Why not? Get 
send me to the hut. Quickly. something to eat. I'll take care of him. This should clear your head a bit. You are not as badly hurt as you think. It is unfortunate that we have to select a child as a hostage. But it is only by horrifying the world that we can bring attention to the plight of 65 of our comrades held in prison under the most revolting circumstances. That's no concern of mine. It should be. You're a human being, are you not? Take fast guard. Sakano, lock him up with the boy. Come on. Come on. Now we've got to fix guard duties. Montes is on first shift. Got everything? Don't make them too comfortable. Are you all right, sir? Uh, yes, thank you, Koichi. I, I think I'm a bit concussed. I don't... I don't really know what's happening. You try to escape? We shoot you. Don't worry, we won't. not escaping? No, of course I didn't. I couldn't tell him that, though, could I? You escaped from two prisoners of war camps. It will be a piece of cake to escape from here. Remember Cronenberg? Of course I do. Couldn't have told you about it otherwise. You were jolly brave, then. That was 30 years ago. Group effort. What are you looking at? Only the sun coming up from behind a the mountain. There is no solemnity so deep to a right thinking creature as that of dawn. These huts are built off the ground, Mr. Bradbury. If we could lay the floorboards. While well, a man with a gun is watching us? I think not, Kirichi. You are not afraid of dying, are you, sir? No, of course not. He who fears death is forfeit of life. But I should quite understand if you were. I am only afraid of dying at this honorable death. I will try and be brave like you, sir. Great party. 
You can file these and I'll have a look at that while uh, I... <clears throat> Japanese ambassador. The, the president and I, all of us, are deeply distressed for you and your family, Mr. Ambassador. Please be seated. I prefer to stand, if I may, Mr. Minister. As you wish. <clears throat> These are the terms of the release of your son and his tutor. They use the usual formula, even to the threat of laying their bodies on the Senate steps. The President has requested me to inform you that he must refuse these demands. No nation can allow itself to be dictated to by blackmailers, kidnappers and murderers. But you can rest assured that every effort will be made by the police and army forces to find your son before the 72 hours are up. Please convey my grateful thanks to the President. I need hardly add, uh, Mr. Ambassador, that you have the sympathy of the entire country. Please also tell the President that had I been in his position, I would have taken exactly the same decision. What do you think you're doing? Trying to get the floor for the dress, sir. Come out of there. Come out. You little idiot. Do you want to get us both shot? No, sir. But it is better to be shot. Trying to escape than to face a firing squad. Who told you that rubbish? You did, sir. I was younger then. But you are fighting proper soldiers. Not two men and a girl. You could easily deal with them. Like this. I'd be much obliged, Koichi, if you would leave the thinking to me. Yes, I'm very sorry, sir. Still, I am glad we have decided to do something, sir. And you can rely on me to help all I can, Mr. Bradbury. How about interest? What's the trouble? That boy, he's too young. So are thousands of other children starving to death in this country. He's not even one of us. If he was, no one would care what happens to him. No one cares that our children die daily. What difference does the death of one more child make? Where did you get that pen and paper? I had this notebook with me. 
for a gallant act. It's Mr. Bradley's. What are you writing? A letter to my father. Write it in English. Do you write to your father in English? My father, my mother and my brothers were all murdered by the police three years ago. I'm sorry. Read me what you have written. My beloved father, it is with great sadness that I like to tell you I may never see you again. That is as far as we got. It's a difficult letter to write. You will tell your father that you are being well treated. And if he loves you, he will demand that the president releases our 65 comrades. Otherwise... Yes? You and your tutor will be executed. May I also say... I love my parents very dearly, and I miss them very much. Now there you are, Herr Müller. Nice of you to drop in. Scotch ice water. Correct? Correct, Mr. Secretary. We all know you're a good friend of our country, Herr Müller. And as a senior member of the press corps, we would like a little advice off the record about the Kagoyama kidnapping. The president thinks he can save the child's life. Really? But He's considering but... informing the kidnappers that unless the boy is returned alive and unharmed within the next 48 hours, all of their comrades will be immediately executed. Is the president prepared to carry out the threat? Of course. Now, the advice we want from you is what would be the reaction of the Western world? Would he be considered as barbaric as those we are trying to defeat? Yes, Mr. Secretary. I believe he would. And if you were the president, would you lose any sleep because the world was concerned with the fate of 65 criminals who, if released, would undoubtedly commit more crimes of violence, terror, blackmail, kidnapping and murder? I personally might not. Good. But no matter what decision the president may make, it's going to be wrong with some people. He has to make that decision alone. And once he's made it, he'll have to live with it. We live in a terrible world. Yes, terrible. We have been told that if the president does not release the prisoner, I can not remember how many prisoners there were. It doesn't matter. Continue. They are going to kill us. Please, please help us, Father. I love you and Mama very much, Koichi. That could give us just the extra pressure we need. I don't like it. Written in Japanese. What does it matter? They can't have any idea where we are. Where is my father going to get it? Tonight. What did you really write in that letter, Koichi? What do you mean, Miss Blabbery? Boys your age don't easily fool me. You were making that letter up as you went along, weren't you? I don't like boys who lie to me. What did you really write? I was trying to help my father to find us. I want the truth. We left the city at 2.25 and got here at 7.20. Say five hours? I have no idea. It was mostly up here. So our speed was about 30 miles an hour. So five times thirty? A hundred and fifty. And we went north, because the sun was always behind us. Very clever. I learned to work things out like that in the postcard. Oh, you should have consulted me before you did it. 
I was only trying to help Sue. But they'll murder us if they find out. My father will send airplanes to search for us. And as soon as they see them, they'll shoot us. Just like that. Sorry to disturb you at this time of the night, Excellency. Thank you. But I have some information that I think you should know. About my son? About his tutor. I've just received an answer to a few questions I've put to our boys in London. Quite an efficient outfit. They can find no record of Bradbury ever having served in the British Army or being awarded any military decorations. In other words, he's a fraud? I'm afraid so. Thank you for bringing this to my attention, Herr Müller. I didn't think it would be right for you to read about it in the papers. There's always the danger of someone else making the same inquiries I made and to come up with a story. You are not going to do so? No, Excellency. If Bradbury comes safely out of this terrible thing, I wouldn't like to be the cause of his going through the rest of his life publicly disgraced. I suppose he does not come out alive. In any case, nothing would be achieved by reporting that he was a pathological liar. I have made a bad error. Very bad. Don't blame yourself, Excellency. Bradbury isn't all bad. He lives in a fantasy world, but... but his spirit. Even so. I appreciate your visit, Herr Müller. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. you doing? My father said I should always be able to look at myself in the mirror and not be ashamed. I cannot look at myself, Mr. Bradbury, because I've been dishonest and because I'm frightened. What have you done that was dishonest, Kaichi? I've not been trusting you, Mr. Bradbury. After all the many brave things you have done. Please forgive me, sir. I promise in future to be patient and do only what you want me to do. <laughs> oh, thank you, Koichi. Naturally, I accept your apology. For you, go to bed now.
Yes, Mr. Bradbury. Wake up, little friend. The time has come. For getting up? No, to escape. Let's take a look at those floorboards. They're too loose already. Yes, if we loosen another, we can both squeeze through. What about the guard? Just getting rid of the guard is only our first hurdle. You see, we're high up on a mountain, miles from anywhere. We may be stuck for days. We've got to eat, we've got to keep warm at night, and we've got to think of some plan to attract attention if they do send an aircraft to search for us. Perhaps... We shouldn't try to escape, Miss Bradbury. Oh, nonsense. I got it all planned out. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Mush mush. Mush mush. Who is it? What? Seen anyone? No. It's a message. And look. What's happening? Look what? Everybody. I'll you. I'll find Open the gate. Quickly. We've seen nothing. There's nothing here. Thank you, General. Uh, please excuse me for disturbing you. What does he say? Oh, what does he say? The Air Force will make an intensive search of the area, starting in three hours' time. Three hours? Why not now? Immediately. It's no good searching in the dark. like a couple of L. Jelsons. Who, sir? Oh, of course you don't remember the singing fool. He always used to black up. I used to have all his records. I used to dance to them as a kid, before I got polio. You'd better know now, in case uh, anything goes wrong. Look, I didn't get this gammy leg. Don't tell me, don't tell me, I don't want to know. You must know. What kind of man I am, Koichi? You are a very fine man, sir. Thank you for that, little friend. Thank you very much. Now, hats on. And we mustn't forget the mirror to signal with. That's right. Give me the sack. And good luck.
Pop that here. They have escaped. In Mark's old car. Stop them. Understood. Wake up. They've escaped. Lottie, up there. Ria, the road. Come in, Sakura. Uh, I'm all right, Mr. Barber, sir. I think. Don't know how I got here. Never mind. But we can't stay here. Give me the stick. That don't break. That good luck. Look down there. We could get to the sir. Yes, go on. Right. You take the river, Ned. We'll beat the bush. Here long.
I've lost them. I think they're heading northwest. We must go where my father can find us. Yes. We'll try and work our way to the top. Look, up there. You go first. Run. No good. I've got no head for heights. We must go on, so they're following us. Yes, they don't know where we are. They do, Mr. Blubbery. I see them. Where? Why didn't you tell me before? A long way away, sir. Too far to shoot at them. I'm not going to. I don't see them. There's one on that cliff near the tree. Sure, you're not imagining things, Koichi? Very sure, Mr. Bradbury, sir. We have to go on this way. No good, I can't go on. Please, please, we are in great danger. Greater, therefore, should our courage be. <laughs> something? Yes, just me. Ah. 
12 tengah hari hari ini, semua ahli seramai 65 orang PRP dalam tahanan polis akan dibunuh dengan segera. Tala, Patet, Sokoro, now come in all of you. Thank you, little friend. Must have passed out. Not like me at all. Come in, Patek, come in. Down. Perhaps she hadn't seen us. Give me the rifle. Message understood. Understood. Just like the one I had that time up the Amazon. What was that, sir? Nothing. The safety cat, sir. Oh, yes. Exactly as I took it down off the radio. What is it? What is it all about? Unless the boy and the man are released unharmed by noon today, they say they will shoot all our people in prison. The man. Maybe he's dead. I think I shot him. Could it be a bluff? Our pig of a president is capable of any atrocity. He would kill all 65? Just like that? The decision has to be ours. Can we sentence our people to certain death? Yes! We'll take a vote. Please! Please! If help doesn't come soon, I think I'm a goner. My father will come. I know he will.
careful with him. Don't sleep. Doctor, come over here. Tamika. Hi. Hi. Still breathing? He's unconscious. Heartbeat's regular. Lost a lot of blood. How is he? Excellency, Mr. Ambassador, got good news for you. Mr. Bradbury lost a lot of blood, but the doctor tells me he'll be all right. He's alive? Yes. <laughs> I think our friend will be around to tell a few more tales. Mr. Bradbury, Your Excellency. Good morning, Mr. Bradbury. I'm glad to see you well again. Please sit down. I only take a minute of your time, Your Excellency. I'm sure that Koichi has told you all about our adventure. Everything. Not quite everything, I suspect. There are one or two other things I have to tell you, sir. I spent World War II as a country schoolmaster. I never was a soldier. I never won a decoration for anything. I am, I always have been, I always will be, a nothing. That's all, sir. I'm very sorry. Goodbye. One moment, Mr. Bradbury. It is not such a terrible thing to dream of glory. Many people imagine themselves great lovers, sportsmen, warriors, even great diplomats. It makes up for what they cannot achieve and usually does no harm. Academic references I sent you were real, sir. I know. I am not interested in your past, but in my son's future. Of course. And I am well aware that but for you, he would have no future. That's not quite true, sir, but the other way around. Koichi and I are both anxious to know when he can resume his lessons. This morning be convenient, sir. Koichi is waiting for you. <laughs> Welcome home, Mr. Bradbury. Good morning, Koichi. <laughs> Off to work. <laughs> 